So, Prime Minister, you were at the NATO summit, another one of these compelling, powerful video addresses by President Zelensky. Let me ask you, can Ukraine win this war? I think Ukraine can certainly uh, win. Um, I don't think it's going to be easy. Uh, I think that the situation for the Ukrainians is, is grim, miserable. I don't think we've seen anything like it for 80 years in, in Europe um, and what uh, Putin is doing is, un is unconscionable. But there's a sense in which uh, Putin has already uh, failed or, or, or lost because I think that he had literally no idea that the Ukrainians were going to mount the resistance that they are. And he totally misunderstood what Ukraine is. And far from extinguishing uh, Ukraine as a, a, as a nation, uh, he's, he's solidifying it. And um, that's, as I said in my, what I said to, to the NATO leaders is, you know, since a month ago, uh, that's the thing that has really emerged as this giant geopolitical fact that uh, he, he can't subjugate Ukra Ukraine. He can't win uh, in that sense. And so uh, that is a colossal thing that the Ukrainians have on their side. Against them, they have this brutal war machine. Our job is to, to do whatever we can to give them the tools to protect themselves. And when you say Ukraine could win, do you mean they could win on the battlefield, grind the Russians down, or win in the sense of make an occupation impossible? It's, it's, the, it's probably the second more than... Look, I'm not a, 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 you know, a, a great military uh, expert, but that, that, is, that is where we think that, that uh, things could, could certainly go. And uh, you know, there are a number of possibilities. Uh, it is still possible that Putin could continue to... Uh, to take heavy losses, could continue to uh, deal death and destruction to uh, the, the cities in the way that he is, uh, to, to Kharkiv, to Mariupol, and all the, all the others. Um, and, and that's why we've got to do more to help the Ukrainians. And I stress that I think the, the Russians are resorting to type. So that, that you know, they think, you think of Aleppo, think of Grozny. Uh, what, what they are expert at is standing as, a, away from these great urban centers mercilessly uh, shelling them and, uh, and bombarding them with rockets. And uh, that's what Putin is now, that's what he's, he's resorting to now. And uh, what we need to do is, is help the Ukrainians to, if we can, to take out uh, that equipment, take out those, uh, those rocket launchers and, and that artillery. Now, you've obviously formed quite a rapport with President Zelensky. How do you see him as a historical figure? Is he up there with Winston Churchill? I think he's extraordinary, and I think he's, he's certainly Churchillian in his technique. And he's, he's brilliant at, uh, at mobilizing his, his people. And, um, you know, he, you know and the, the, the people of Ukraine are the, uh, are the lion. He's privileged to give the roar. Uh, but but it's, it's more than that. He's, he's doing very much what Churchill did in uh, trying, in using all his diplomatic skill uh, to get uh, allies to come in on, uh, on his side. And uh, he has been very successful in that. It, it was only a few months ago that the United Kingdom was the only European country uh, to give actual uh, weapons to support the Ukrainians. You've now got dozens. And that's thanks to the, the skill and courage of Volodymyr Zelensky. You say Churchillian in the way that Winston Churchill won over allies. Churchill stood alone, but ultimately he won only with the hard power of allies. Do you personally regret that, yes, the UK and NATO are providing equipment, but you cannot ultimately provide that guarantee? You cannot get boots on the ground. Ukraine, in a sense, is on its own. And yes, I think it would be fair to say that every leader around the table uh, feels that agony that, uh, of, of Volodymyr Zelensky that, uh, no, there's no Western democracy that's talking about uh, boots on the ground of, of their own uh, troops. Uh, nobody's talking about sending up uh, their own fighter pilots to take out uh, Russian fast jets, uh, if, which is what you need to do for a no-fly zone, or to take out the... Uh, the, the ground-to-air uh, missiles are, are also vital for 
uh, enforcing a, a no-fly, no, or taking out those missiles is vital for enforcing a no-fly zone. That's, that's not on the agenda. Um, but I think what is happening, if I could just sort of give you a, a, a sort of sketch of, the, of a potential future, what is happening is that the extent of global sympathy for Ukraine and the massive emotional outpouring, which we all feel when we look at what's happening, is leading to this desire to, to help, help with uh, humanitarian aid, uh, help with refugees, but also help with, uh, with, with kit. And the more that goes in, the more that kit is the equipment, the weapons are hel helping to change the face of battle in, uh, in Ukraine. And giving the, the Ukrainians the, the tools that they need. And over time, you can imagine that even if you can't have a, an Article 5 guarantee uh, for Ukraine, uh, 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 I mean, full membership of NATO, uh, inside the thermonuclear umbrella, as it were, uh, you can imagine that the Western sympathizers of, of Ukraine will provide so much by way of equipment, training, uh, intelligence, as to create a kind of deterrence uh, for Ukraine by denial. Deterrence by denial of, of Russian possibility to, to invade again. And, and so what I'm talking about is, as it were, so fortifying the, so strengthening the quills of the Ukrainian porcupine as to make it in future indigestible uh, to, uh, to the Russian uh, invaders. And would that military help guarantee any peace agreement between Russia and Ukraine or do you not take those peace talks seriously? Do you think Russia's playing a game? I think it's very important to, and I think you know, all colleagues around the table today who are continuing to work on negotiations uh, as, uh, and we, you know, we're, I discuss continually uh, with Volodymyr about potential for diplomatic solutions, of course. Um, I think that's, that's entirely the sensible thing to do. Everybody wants peace, including the United Kingdom. We, we, you know, the, this, this thing, if this thing could be solved, it would be fantastic. Um, I've got to tell you that I'm not optimistic that Vladimir Putin really wants that. I think he's decided to double down and to try to groznify uh, the great cities of, uh, of Ukraine in, in the way that he, uh, he's always uh, tried to do. And I, I think that's a tragic mistake. Uh, but um, that's what he seems to be doing at the moment. Therefore, we need to, to do more uh, as the West, intensifying the, the, the sanctions, sending more missiles, as we announced today, 6,000 more missiles, uh, toughening up our sanctions, doing more to stop leakage of uh, Russian gold, uh, all the ways in which we can uh, tighten, the, tighten the screw on him. And Russia is listening to this language, and today Moscow has said you are leading the anti-Russia forces. Are you a marked man? No, look, I think there's nobody around the, the table in, in NATO, certainly not in the, in the G7, uh, who feels anything but sympathy for the Russian people who are being very badly led. I'm a, I'm a, uh, a massive Russophile and always have been, and I believe that, Ru that Russia is a great, great country with a great language, culture and, and civilization, and, and always have done. And, you know, and as, as, I've, as I've said before, I think I'm, uh, I can tell you without fear of contradiction, I'm the only uh, UK Prime Minister to have been called Boris. So I'm not remotely uh, anti-Russian. But uh, the regime of Vladimir Putin is tragically, uh, I think, betraying uh, Russia's real interests and is doing devastating damage to Russia's reputation and the sooner that ends, the better. So strong criticism of Russia, but do you think you have a, a consistent record of this, on this? Do you feel comfortable that you gave a period to Lord Lebedev after he appeared to tolerate the Russian annexation of Crimea? He talked about that Crimea had been Russian for a very long time. I think it is really, I mean, I go back to the, my, my last uh, answer. I think it is really, really important that in our discussion of this whole thing, we shouldn't play the Kremlin's game and seem to be anti-Russian uh, or uh, to be anti-Russian people just because they're Russian people. And I, you know, I was very proud uh, when I was running London 
that we boasted uh, all sorts of people. We had uh, loads of people from Russia. We also had 400,000 French people, I seem to remember. I think I was the mayor of the, uh, uh, the, the, the fourth or fifth big, biggest French city in the, in the world. So, you know, um, th there's, I think you, you, can, you can disagree profoundly, we, uh, no more than disagree, you can, you can be viscerally hostile to what Vladimir Putin is doing, but uh, that doesn't entail any hostility to, to Russians. Two summits here and today. And shouldn't, and shouldn't. Right, there's two summits here today. You're not going to the third one, the European Council. We all know why that is, but President Zelensky is addressing his dream to join the European Union. Do you think you should apologise to him and to the Ukrainian people for mentioning in the same breath Brexit, the struggle for Brexit, and the struggle. Well, no, because Petro Poroshenko, the former Ukrainian president, who admires you greatly, said, "Boris Johnson, don't say that. People are dying in my country. Nobody died over Brexit." And he's quite. And I totally agree with what Pedro said. And uh, and uh, you're you're absolutely right. But that was not a um, a uh, an analogy that I was making. I'm afraid that was that was wildly uh, misconstrued. Uh, I said, I think, in, uh, in the, in the self-same uh, passage that there's been nothing like uh, what we're seeing in, in, uh, in Ukraine since 1945. Uh, and it is, it is a horror. And um, it can't be compared to anything since 1945. And we need to recognise that this is a, a pretty crucial moment for, for, for us all. And I, and I, I said this to to colleagues at the G7 and, uh, and NATO. And we need to think about the decisions we take now because if Ukraine is engulfed and Putin gets his way, then the, the, in one way or, or another, and you know, there, there are, I mean, the tragedy is there are, there are several varieties of, of outcome that Putin can portray as a, as a kind of success. But if that were to happen, it would be a catastrophe uh, for the world, a catastrophe for Ukraine, and uh, we, we've got to do everything we can to stop it. Finally, you're a very lucky general, aren't you? This war is going to save what was a very precarious premiership after all those uh, claims about Partygate being interviewed by the police, um, interviewed, uh, through, in, a, in a written form by the police. Um, what does it say about your premiership that it takes the most serious war in Europe since the Second World War for you to escape? I think, I think what it says is that we're, we're, we're very lucky to live in a country where uh, journalists can, can pr quite properly go hard on this, this sort of question, this sort of, uh, of issue. Because I can tell you, Nick, that is not what happens in, in Vladimir Putin's Russia. Uh, and uh, it's certainly uh, something that we want to make sure uh, continues to happen in Ukraine. So you that welcome is, tough questions about party games. So that's, yes, of course, that is what it's all about. And um, it's about, and I'm, 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 I mean it quite seriously. Um, well, let me if, test you, if, on, a, let me if, test you if, on a tough if, question. Let me test if, you on, a, well, how do you feel? very little I can say I, about it. But how do you feel that you're there with all those world leaders and they're saying that's the guy who made the rules and then he didn't observe them? Look, I, I think what, uh, what people understand is that if, uh, Vladimir Putin lived in a democracy. And if Vladimir Putin had Newsnight on his case uh, and, and uh, people asking him really penetrating questions about what he really thought he was doing in, in Ukraine, whether he really understood what kind of people the Ukrainians were and how, if he'd really thought it through, I don't think he would have made the catastrophic mistake that he's made. And uh, in a way, uh, what he has done, this appalling invasion, is paradoxically a, an advertisement for the, the, the importance of the very system that he's trying to destroy in Ukraine. That's, why, that's what we're, we're trying to protect. Prime Minister, thank you thank for you. talking to Newsnight. Thank you.